Welcome back to the Vet SOS podcast brought to you by the Who You Know Network. Uh, remember, don't try to see a transition, but grab the Vet SOS Lifeline. Mark, I'm excited. I, I hope you're ready for today. Uh, we got David Trenholm with us today. Amazing individual. I I've been fortunate to deal with him in a couple different organizations. Uh, does some amazing things for our community. He's going to have some serious knowledge bombs to drop on us today. As always, I'm here with my partner, Mark. Mark, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, uh, folks. Thanks for joining. And as always, you know, make sure that you're paying it forward, that you're getting this information out to your community, to your platforms and social media. Um, Sean's going to talk about pairing here in a second, but uh, be sure to share this episode out as well. Absolutely. And we want to thank everybody who's been tuning in, who's been pairing their channels with us. If you don't know how to pair your channels through Restream, please hit us up with hashtag pairing. And we'll let you know how to do that. You can put this episode out as original content on your channels. Without further ado, we're going to get right into it here. We got uh, David Trenholm with us. He's a retired naval aviator living in the Jacksonville area. He currently works for Bank of America, a position he earned through the Bank of America Global Technology and Operation Military Development Program. He's extremely active in the veteran support community, serving with organizations like Vets Industry, Operation New Uniform, Vets on Tap, Four Block, and Veterati. David, pleasure to see you again. How are you doing today? Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks, Mark and Sean, for having me. It's it's an amazing opportunity, you know, to you know share my story and and hopefully uh, other people learn from my mistakes uh, and their transition. I, I know I certainly valued from it. Uh, I, Mark, so you know, my first contact was uh, through Veterati. Um, it was actually Bruce who told me to contact David. And, and so I set that up. And then through our Veterati call, David tells me about the Bank of America program, which I'll, I'll let him maybe explain a little bit here if he wants to. Um, wound up actually being a finalist for that, but went with the other direction with the fellowship job. Um and then, of course, I did four block and David was one of the assistant instructors. So, I, it, you know, and my wife did ONU, which you can see on his shirt. You know, so it, I feel like Dave and I've been together for a long time. Hey, yeah, that's great. And uh, yeah, no, I know I'd love to talk to you more offline about your uh, your aviation uh, background and some things you did in the Navy. So uh, but thanks for joining us, um, man. You are just super busy, super active, like seems like you're in just about everything everything you can the major organizations right um yeah tell us how you you know how did you get through the program because i want to hear about that too um you know with with that program the military development program that's awesome we we just had a guest on earlier that was talking about ergs right um and so is that an erg and can you tell us a little bit more about your experience through that so um, Bank of America actually has four different veteran hiring programs. Um, two of them can be used for a skill bridge, um, but that's only they're only available one time out of the year. It's in the springtime of every year. Um, but the program I went through, which at the time was called the Global Technology Operations Military Development Program, was a two year rotational. Um, so you spent one year doing one job at the bank and then you do you know, your second rotation, you do a different job. The whole point of the, the was is they're bringing in veterans that have no banking experience, half to most of them either don't have a finance degree of some sort or, or business degree, or don't even have MBAs. Um, you know, one of the one of the people in my class, uh, Patricia, she was an amazing lady. Um, she was a meteorologist in the, in the military. You know, she was a weather guesser, no banking experience. She was in the same program as me. Um, I did have a uh, finance and real estate bachelor's, but my master's is in operations management. Um, but, you know, came in, hit the ground running, kept my mouth shut, my ears open, um, because it's a completely different world, different acronyms, different standards, different ways of doing business. You know, and, and I soaked in a lot of that and and what made me successful is having great mentors um, in the bank. Um, so I learned how to take my skills, everything I've learned through the military with leadership, motivation, all that stuff, and, and was able to tweak it to meet a different mission, a different mindset. Um, you know, I finished the program um, after two years, I'll hit my three year mark with Bank America here in February. Um, you know, I just found out yesterday that, uh, I got a title promotion 
going from assistant vice president, which is what I entered in as, to now vice president. Nice. Um, I went from just being what's in throughout the entire two year program, I was what's called an individual contributor. So I wasn't in charge of anybody, you know, no evals, no fit reps, nobody directly reported to me. But I had a lot of people indirectly report to me because I get put on a lot of projects that I was leading. Or if I wasn't leading, I was assisting on a bigger project. And even on that assisting one, I showed up day one. They taught me like there's 15 steps we had to we had to um, make sure that met this regular reg, regulatory requirement. They said, "All right, Dave, you're doing these four steps." I'm like, cool. All right, went to one training session, maybe two. Started doing some stuff. I would call back every once in a while, like, "Hey, I got a really important question. This is some. This is a one off. I got another one. This is a one off." Next thing you know, like three days later, there's like, all right, Dave, you are now the subject matter expert. You're training everybody else that comes in. I'm like, wait a minute. I just showed up to the bank like three months ago. <laughs> now you want me to train other people that have been here 20 years. Okay. The, the curse of the military. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, but since it's I left, a fantastic uh, my, last, my last role was in uh, quality assurance, quality control. Um, do a reorg. My boss, two levels up, was, you know, so impressed with me that she, I thought I was just going to move with the team. No, she grabbed me up, said, now you're creating a team, you're leading. I've got nine people directly reporting to me as a uh, business control manager. And, you know, it's it's getting bigger, better, faster all the time. Yep. That's an amazing opportunity. And, uh, I was very thankful to even be considered in the program, the, the way it all worked out. I just I got lucky and had a fellowship offer and, and the Bank of America offer at the same time. And I got to choose, which is the perfect scenario, I guess. Um, so it, it just amazing program for transitioning, especially if it lines up with your transition. That's beautiful. Um, real quick, I know, Mark, you mentioned ERGs and Dave, I've heard you talk about the ERG, um, the veteran ERG with um Bank of America and how powerful that is, how strong it is. Can you tell us a little bit about that real quick? Sure. Um, we have our, our veteran ERG is called MSAG. So it stands for Military Support Affinity Group. Um, so it's consistent of veterans, military spouses, and anybody who supports pretty much veterans or even first responders. Um, in Jacksonville, we have 42 different chapters. There's one in uh, England, there's one in India. Um, so not only just across the country, but around the world. Uh, and heck, here in Jacksonville, Florida, our chapter is 800 people strong. Um, there's 8,000 employees for Bank of America in Jacksonville, Florida. You know, you're already seeing 10% are either veterans or support veterans right there. You know, and through our, through our veteran hiring initiatives, the programs, and it's not just you know, some of the things that's really great is is the bank listens to the ERGs. And so I don't I think it was like seven years ago, the bank said, hey, we're going to hire 15,000 veterans. Sweet. Awesome. Not only did they meet that, they exceeded that. Um, but what they did here is something we've heard a lot of times. You know, that statistic that a lot of veterans leave their first job, you know, before the end of their first year. You know, it's a lot of veterans in the company went up to, the, you know, the execs and said, hey, we need to prevent this from happening. We're seeing it happen ourselves. So what did they do? They created uh, two other programs. Like it's called a veteran onboarding initiative where um, they partner you up with a seasoned veteran in the company. You know, we've got guys that did 20 years in the military and then did 20 years at the bank. Um, you know, we've got others that did four years in the military, came out and now they're 15, 20 years in the bank. And so they give you somebody to mentor, to be your mentor, to help guide you. Um, you know, for me, it was like, Hey, you know, we're always used to beat the meeting 15 minutes early, not very good practice in, in the real world. You know, it's more of like, you're either on time or it's actually exceptional, acceptable to be a little late because guess what? The previous meeting ran over, you know, it's not, you know, so if you're sitting there for 15 minutes, holding your thumbs, people are thinking you're weird or you're just wasting 15 minutes of man hour every hour. Um, that that's yeah, an eye opener. Yep, <laughs> sitting in a meeting waiting for people. <laughs> yep, because nobody's everybody's either showing up on time or a little bit late. 
Um, and then the other thing they did is uh, they created a veteran, veteran development program. So what is that? That is, you know, a, uh, like a four or six month course where they meet once a month. Um, you learn about other veterans in the bank across the country. You learn about different roles in the bank. You learn from senior veteran military mentors um, and you start connecting. And so, you know, once again, the biggest thing about the ERGs, it, you know, in the bank is to create, you know, that that loop of, you know, togetherness, like, hey, we were all veterans. We all used to talk the same language. We're talking this different language, but we can get together at times, you know, and just let our hair down. What little I have left. Um, and, you know, reminisce on the good old days. Say some, tell some sea stories. Some, you know, discuss things with your battle buddies. You know, see what the, your, 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 uh, your Air Force mates are doing, you know, and, and you know, get to crack jokes at each other. You know, that, that might not go over well in the office. So, you know, you, you get that camaraderie back with the veteran ERGs, you know, and so it, it's, it's amazing. And, um, you know, I joined our ERG my first year. I was just a participant. My second year in the company, I started to host events. So, you know, we would do social events. We would meet. We'd have Thursday, third Thursdays, um, you know, and I organized that and a couple other things so well that. By year three, they asked me to be a co-chair. So now I'm one of three people that lead the entire organization of 800. You know, and this is all like what we call collateral duties. Yeah. You know, not required. Bank of, yeah. uh, Bank of America has an amazing culture and, and the, the veteran ERG thing is amazing. And the fact that you got 800 members and that's that's amazing. But let's let's talk about some of your other collateral duties, uh, if you will. Um, so oh and you I, I know you were a board member I believe recently I saw a post that uh, you're changing positions yep so uh, this will be my third year on the board my first year once again I was just a member my second year I was the secretary of the board and this year I just got promoted up to vice chair of the board of directors you know what am I doing I'm volunteering my time I'm actually you know helping raise funds for the organization um, and the only other thing is out of our roughly 12 to 13 board members, I'm the only alumni that went through the program, mm -hmm. you know, so I bring an insight of being a student of Operation Uniform, which is a transition assistance program for veterans, military spouses. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're pre or post 9-11. It doesn't matter if you have a degree. It doesn't matter if you did three years or 40 years. You know, it doesn't matter if you're transitioning or you transitioned 20 years back in, you know, your Vietnam era guy. You know, they'll take anybody, um, but they keep their classes very small. And the two main things they really focused on was kind of the mental health. So, you know, I'm still valued. I took off that rank, that ribbon, those medals. Uh, nobody's walking around calling me sir anymore. You know, and for a lot of people, that's losing their identity. You know, going through the interview hiring process can beat somebody down, you know, who's done... 20 plus years, type A personalities, everything we ever did, we achieved, never got turned down. And now all of a sudden, every time you turn around, you're getting ghosted, you're getting rejected, you're overqualified, underqualified, you know, the entire transition process. So they helped me with my mental aspect. And then what they did after that was nobody better prepared me for the interviews than Operation Uniform um, because they are their their training is based on the sandler training system and what is the sander training system sandler training trains salesmen so what did they train me to do they trained me how to sell myself during an interview so between selling myself to the inner and building up my confidence i went into interviews to the point where it wasn't them interviewing me um i was actually interviewing the company to see if that was a place, number one, that I felt valued. Number four, two, I felt that there was a career and that there was mutual respect, you know, because the other thing they really, really preach at OMU, unlike some of the tap courses out there that are just number crunchers, get, get them in, get them out, you know, get a job. OMU preaches, you're looking for a career, yep. 
not a job. A job is something to pay the bills. A career is something you see, can see yourself doing for 20 years. I just, I, I want to pause for just a second because, man, you just dropped a huge, huge bomb. Uh, well, many bombs, but um, yeah, you know, so <clears throat> when you're talking about, you know, the support that you're getting and owing you and, you know, just showing up and, and, you know, volunteering, going through the program, being a participant and then being recognized and, you know, just kind of those steps that you take, like, um, you, you know, you, you said something that really, really resonates with me, which is, you know, you, you've got to um, be a participant, right, to be recognized. Um, and then as far as going through maybe those steps as you're going through those, um, your, what did you say earlier when, when you were going through the program and you had said um, that the, the, the organization, right, that, that you're participating in, in this case, it's, you know, on you or any of these other collaterals that you're doing, um, when you're showing up and you're active, people recognize that. And that's how you get noticed, right? Because that's what it's all about. It's about getting noticed and, and then going through the training, Sandler, I think it was, right? You had said the Sandler training. Um, you've, got to, you've got to learn to sell yourself, right? Because it is sales. We've talked about this in previous shows. Yeah. You are in sales when you're in transition. Yeah. Um, but part of that, is going into an interview and it's a mindset shift for a lot of people that you can't be the interviewee, right? Going into an interview, that's the wrong mindset and mentality. You have to be the interviewer. And so a lot of people, they, they don't understand that. They don't get that. And it's not natural, right? Maybe for someone to think that way. So that's huge. What you just said is just you know, in all these things that led up to that are just enormous. Well, and it, the, the other thing that really helped me understand is, you know, in the military, we always talk about we, 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 we did this, we accomplished that, the team, it's all about the team, you know, and, and then I had to, you know, it's not about we, it's about me, you know, is, you know, but still being humble, you know, so we accomplished this great goal. And this is what I did on the team to accomplish that goal because companies I want to know what you did specifically, not what your team did. You know, what did you do? Turn it into metrics. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I, you know, helped with, you know, running so many training courses, getting so many people through graduating them ahead of schedule, preparing for deployment, you know, saving time, saving costs, saving man hours, you know, putting those into metrics. We, we see this quite a bit in just the civilian career transition space because we do a lot of work there as well, you know, not just um, military focus. But one of the things that we talk about in some of our trainings is, you know, creating the perception and the realization. Your perception is your reality, right? And so if your perce perception is that you're going into an interview and they're interviewing you, you are already coming into that in, from a position of weakness, Right. And not that yep. you are weak, but just that just that really kind of nuanced position of power. Right. And you want to come into an interview in any interaction. Right. Really. I mean, from a position of power. And so I think that that's what people that are in going through this experience currently involved um, need to understand is that. And, and a lot of people are like, well, I don't have any power. Right. They're, they've got the job. I don't. Well, and, absolutely wrong, right? You do still have power. You absolutely do, but it's when you have certain things. So, you know, two years before I got out, I did a I did a big thing about paying off all my debt, building what I called a war chest, so that heaven forbid I don't get a job right away, I can live for the next three to six months. You know, so so many times if you go into an interview in a position of weakness or desperation. That's when you take the job and not the career. Um, and then, you know, most of us don't know about salary negotiations or benefits negotiation. So I see all the times veterans go, well, I'll just take this because they offered me a job and now I owe them loyalty because I have a job, in which I try to tell people like, look, we're free agents now. You know, 
a company can let us go. And we're seeing this right now um, with all the layoffs that you could be hired today and fired tomorrow. So I tell them, be as loyal to the company as they are loyal to you, you know, and always be prepared, always continue networking because you never know. You never know what could happen. That That's a huge point. You, you see it all the time. People all of a sudden start networking again, you know, dropped all their friends and connections and everything. Um, I love what ONU is doing, dude. Uh, we, we actually had Tracy uh, on the show um, last month. Uh, his episode will be coming out here soon to talk about ONU as well. Uh, just the amazing mission and what you guys got going. I didn't realize that you were the only graduate on the board. So that, that's pretty cool. And, and I know you bring an extra um, or a different point of view, you know, to the, the board and the discussions. Um, so what's the deal with four block? Well, what made you get involved in uh four block? And I think this was your first, this past course that I was in was your, your first one as a AI, right? Yep. So, um, once again, it's just me. I dabble in a lot of different spaces. Uh, Baron Mills, uh, who used to be a four block instructor down in Orlando. Um, he runs the, uh, the veteran beer club down there. So for networking in Orlando area, um, he put a post out saying, Hey, we're looking for four block coaches. We're looking for people to help mentor and help with the class. And I reached out to him. I was like, Hey dude, I'd love to help. I mean, I'm in, or I'm in, uh, you know, Jack's, but you know, I'll, I'll help wherever I can. And then he goes, well, guess what? Just this semester, they're building a virtual Southeast run by Brian Blockberger, Blocksberger and Bruce Thompson. The name keeps popping up everywhere. Uh, they're they're going to be the instructors for this course. They would love to have a coach. So I, I attended to all the classes. I coached and mentored two students in the class. Um, you know, did that for two, if not three uh, cohorts. And then Bruce Thompson moved on to you know, another opportunity, which oh, created an open role for me. Guess what? I just reached out to Brian, like, hey, Brian, are you guys looking to replace Bruce? Uh, you know, I'd love to join the team, you know, and, and and not just be a coach and mentor, but actually teach the class. And he goes, well, Bruce just left. And, you know, guess what? They've known me because I've been there for two, three cohorts, coaching, mentoring, and helping in the classrooms. They're like, absolutely, we'd love to get you on. So, you know, that was pretty easy. Guess what? Networking and, and volunteering landed to another part-time role for me. So what's the, well, first of all, did you attend four block as a participant or was that just uh, something you got involved in on the side? So I attended as a mentor and coach, but I made sure my first time going through it, I attended every single class because I wanted to know everything they were teaching and everything they were doing. So I kind of went through as a coach slash mentor um, and then, you know, became an instructor. And, and their, their training session is amazing um, because what's unique about four block is they have host com com companies come in with their ERG, their veteran ERG programs. Um, we're talking, you know, things that come up all the time, PwC, CSX, um, T-Mobile, Verizon, uh, Delta, you know, all these different companies come in with, you know, five to 10 of their associates. They help teach a class. They talk, they get an opportunity to talk about their companies and then they go out to breakout sessions. So what better way to network with somebody who's in a company, build a relationship through a breakout session and go, Hey, Mark, I see you're over at city, you know, this is me. I'm getting out. You know, would love to talk to you and chat some more after this. Next thing you know, that that networking opportunity le leads to careers in desired companies. Yeah, uh, four blocks an amazing program. The the whole way it was set up, and that was one of those that I was told I had to do. You know, when I when I first started the transition, I was told ACP commit and four block were the four, and then of course you know Veterati. And I believe I made the most of every one of those opportunities. And um, I, I love the fact that you're, you're involved in these types of things. Um, not only ONU, because I saw a huge growth in my wife because she went through ONU through the spouse. The, I think it was the first spouse's program. It was. You know, and, and so I got to see her and I had to drag her kicking and screaming to, to sign up for it. But um, in, in the long run, I, I think it was huge for her. 
you know, and it was really the first thing she did as part of the transition process. Um, and then four block was essentially the last thing I did in, in my transition process. I wish I would have done it earlier, um, but still very thankful for the program. Glad I got to do it. Um, so we're getting down uh, to, to the end here already. It seems like we just started. Um, <laughs> so that what that tells me is we have to book David for a second episode. Um, but I start looking at, you know, I'm moving to Jacksonville, got a job lined up. I, I want to be involved in, in the veteran support community. You know, we, we got Vet SOS going. And then I start looking around and I see, you know, I'm going to have people around me mentor type people I, I would hope in like bruce and will and david all being there in jacksonville and i consider myself a lucky man mark <laughs> yeah we got ourselves part of the uh the jacksonville veteran mafia um, yeah <laughs> and, and the nice thing i will the, the nice thing in jacksonville is that every vso for the for the most part in jacksonville gets along Nobody's trying to hoard people and say, oh, no, no, that's that's a four block student. That's an ONU student. We're like, no, every single person, every single program teaches and focuses on something different. So my biggest advice to anybody while you're transitioning, you know, the tap courses through the military are the beginning, not the ending. I highly recommend, like I never went through the Commit Foundation, but I've never heard a certain single person say anything bad about the Commit Foundation. Yep. Um, and their program. So commit four block, veterati, ACP, um, vets to industry, operation in uniform, onward to opportunity. And I know there's a plethora of other ones that are very good. Um, you don't have to do them all, but if you have the opportunity, do as many of them as possible because the 80% that's repeated, obviously that's important. And it's that little 20% that each one focuses on different that expands your knowledge even more and builds your network. Yeah, that that's huge. And that's something I had to tell myself, you know, because I, I took the opportunity. I, I did the full two-year transition. And it's like, man, they're talking about the same stuff. What am I doing here? And then you start paying attention, realize, okay, yeah, so that, that's very important. But look at this part here that they're talking about that nobody else talked about. And, you know, so that, that's an amazing point. And I agree wholeheartedly. If you can do it, do do as much as you can. There's going to be some overlap. But if it's being overlapped, there's a reason for it. You know, it's like the professor, you know, tapping their foot up at the front of the class for the test. <laughs> so, um, so as we get ready to close, Two questions for you, uh, David. W what is the best way people can get a hold of you or, or get in contact with you? And two, what do you want to leave the audience with? So the the uh, the best and easiest way to get a hold of me is just find me on LinkedIn, it's David Trenholm. You know, my my I changed my URL, so it's just pretty much that. Very easy to find me. And um, what was the what was the second part again? Um, what would you like to leave the audience with? Like, what, what would your parting thought be to our audience? So my parting thought is get out of your comfort zone, network, network, network. If you're if you're an introvert, bring a wingman, bring that cheerleader with you, you know, to help you out. Because networking slash internal referrals is the number one way to land a career, not a resume. A resume helps, but you got to get your foot in the door to the interview first. And, and nine, 85, 90% of those are, are through uh, referrals, through through a network you build. That, that who you know theme keeps coming up, Mark. Mark, you got yep. any party comments? No, I, I just think, man, tons of nuggets and, and bombs dropped, knowledge bombs dropped. David, um, thank you, man. You're doing a ton. Um, I'm going to, I've got some connections for you as well. I think I'd like to I'll make outside of here, but thanks for joining in guys connect with David. Um, number one, right. Just for networking sake, but he's got just great programs and these VSOs and all these organizations he's involved in are just doing amazing things. So thank you. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. You need to connect, follow David. 
you know, like I said, a chance call through Veterati and I wound up getting a job offer through a program that, that David took advantage of as well. You never know where these things are going to lead. So take advantage of these different things that we're telling you about. It can definitely make a difference. And, and David, a personal thank you for me, for everything you've done to help me through my process. Uh, I feel like you've been with me for like 18 months. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. It's been a pleasure. Uh, and, and it always brightens my my heart to see, you know, veterans succeeding in their transition because they took advice and put it and put it to action. Yeah, absolutely. And we've all seen the ones that want to fight you the whole way. Um, as always, want to thank everybody for tuning in today uh, to the Vet SOS podcast. Remember, don't try on the sea of transition, but grab the Vet SOS lifeline. 